So good morning listeners, my name is Leanne Peard, Social Media Specialist here in Cairns and today it gives me the great pleasure to have an opportunity to interview one of the world leading networkers. Uh, today's discussion will be about networking online, offline and how the marriage of the two will actually come together. Um, and today I would like to introduce to you the world leading networker as I said, some of you may be familiar of him and some of you may not. And today I'm talking with Dr. Ivan Meisner. Dr. Meisner is the founder and chairman of BNI International, which is the world's leading and largest business networking organisation. BNI was founded in 1985, and the organisation has today over 6,300 chapters that are populated throughout every continent in the world. Last year alone, the BNI generated 7.1 million referrals between their members, which actually resulted in a $3.3 billion US turnover of business value for its members. So hello and welcome Dr. Meisner. It truly is a, a wonderful experience to be able to uh, talk to you this morning and have you share your knowledge on networking with our listeners. Thank you, Leanne. I appreciate it. And please call me Ivan. Okay, thank you, Ivan. So, Ivan, uh, I know that you've been networking for many, many years, and BNI started in 1985. So, would you like to share uh, why BNI started and what made you uh, actually pull the group of the corporation together back in those early days? Yeah, I, I would like to tell you that I had this vision of a, an international organization with uh, thousands of groups in dozens of countries, but the truth is I needed some referrals for my consulting practice. And uh, I was a management consultant. I did work with uh, companies in hiring, training employees. And uh, I put together some friends I trusted. They trusted me. I hoped that they would be willing to refer me. I was willing to refer them. And uh, someone came who couldn't join because of a conflict. We, from the very beginning, took one person per profession. And she asked if I would help her open up a second group. And I said, N no, because uh, this isn't what I do. You know, I'm, I'm a business consultant. And she convinced me that it was sort of a form of consulting, and so I agreed. We opened a second group. 25 people came. Two couldn't join because of a conflict. Both of them said, wow, this is great. I could get a ton of business out of this. If you help me open up my own group, you can run four of these. I said, this isn't what I do. Uh, and But, but I, they convinced me. I opened those two. We ended up opening 20 groups in the first year by accident. Wow. And it was I, it was amazing. And at that point, um, I realized that I had struck a chord in the business community that I didn't expect. And that's when I really sat down one year after I started BNI and really looked at what happened and uh, how this was helping business people that I didn't anticipate. And it was at that point that I kind of created the vision of where I wanted the organization to go in many ways. Wonderful. Thank you for that. That's that's just so exciting that uh, you struck it, you know, not lucky, but struck a chord that was obviously a need in the business yeah. uh, industry back then, and I think it still is today. So we'll, we'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard, you've probably heard the expression, necessity is the mother of invention, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's got B&I written all over it. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So... <coughs> I understand the philosophy of BNI, um, but I was wondering if you would actually share the philosophy behind BNI with our listeners, and in particular, um, how does that, in your thoughts or your beliefs, how does that connect back to networking and business? Yeah, so the philosophy of BNI can be summed up in two simple words: uh, givers gain. Givers gain. If you want to get business from people, you have to be willing to give business to people. And it's actually predicated on um, a theory in social capital theory called the law of reciprocity. And the law of reciprocity, important to point out, is, is not a transactional law. Instead, instead, it's a transformational law. And it basically uh, says that um, uh, by building relationships with others, uh, you are willing to help them and that they will uh, be willing to help you. It's sort of that concept of what goes around comes around. Now, it's important to understand that it's not transactional. Uh, I call that coin-operated networking. You know, I'll put the coin in, give me the candy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, that doesn't work. If, it's, if there's a, a quid pro quo requirement, 
the law of reciprocity doesn't work. It only works when people are there to truly effectively help one another. And that's sort of the basis of the philosophy of Giver's Game. Wonderful. Thank you. Such a beautiful philosophy. That's really, um, it's, it's heartfelt, isn't it, to be able to share and give and, and not expect anything in return. Yeah, and, and a lot of people are like, well, wait a minute, why, why in the world would I do that if you're not expecting anything in return? I, I think you can say that you, you can expect something in return, but not necessarily directly from the person that gave you something. That The idea is that we're all contributing to a, a stronger group of business professionals and that by giving to that group you will get back from that group and and I think you can expect that just don't expect that each and every individual is going to give you back exactly what you give them then it becomes a matter of a, a you know a, a chart of accounts where you're you know keeping a, a, a record of the exact amounts uh, generated and that tends not to work that tends to be transactional mm. Wonderful. And I think if, um, you know, everybody goes in with that mindset or that heartfelt, um, you know, using that law, I think that that's where the B&I chapters uh, grow exponentially, don't they? Because of that uh, yeah. common call. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So in your view and in your experience, um, has anything changed as far as businesses getting leads and rever referrals over the past, um, well, that, what is it, over 20 years? Or is anything... Um, actually remained? So there's, there's two parts to that question. Have you seen any really big changes and have you seen anything that is still the common core fundamental for business owners like myself to actually generate leads and, and business? Yeah, let me start with the last part of the question. Is, is there anything that has remained consistent? And I would say yes, um, relationships as a core of referral development has remained consistent. As a matter of fact, I would argue it transcends cultural differences. Uh, different people, different places, different races, different religions, different countries, different cultures. We all speak the language of referrals. We all want to do business with people we know and trust. There is no country in the world, entrepreneurial country, there is no entrepreneurial country in the world where trust is not the cornerstone of passing referrals. And that hasn't changed in the 28 plus years that I've been running BNI. Now, what has changed? The first part of your question. Technology uh, clearly has um, altered the landscape of networking. Uh, first and foremost, technology, uh, the internet, social media, flattens the communication hierarchy. I couldn't imagine running an organization with 6,000 people, or 6,000 chapters. By the way, we hit our 150,000th member yesterday. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I can't imagine having 150,000 members worldwide uh, without the internet. It gives us a, an ability. Uh, I have members around the world who can connect with me directly. Look how we're doing this interview mm -hmm. via, you know, via uh, the internet um, with video. Uh, 28 years ago, I could not have imagined um, that, that we would have this. And it definitely changes things. It, it keeps the touch points more active and it allows us as local business professionals, and, and we, we're dealing with local business people around the world, to, to, to act globally, to, to connect with people globally. And, and that is a big change from when I started b &I. Mm, I couldn't agree with you more. The technology, I think it's made it, it – I feel that business owners are, are fearful of it because they don't understand the power behind it. Um, however, in saying that too, once they could grasp the ground roots of networking and build on that in the social space or the internet space, their businesses can become global, can't they? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we we believe in the idea of a local business global network, and mm -hmm. that's uh, that's what we're trying to do, to create. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. So, casting your thoughts back um, to 1985, and as the founder and chairman of BNI, what do you see today still being? I'm sure there is one thing that we all do wrong. What would be the number one mistake that business owners are actually still doing <laughs> and not learning? Yeah. Yeah, um, it would. Uh, we, I talked about it in a book uh, I wrote called "Business Networking and Sex: Not What You Think." Uh, it's about 
It, it, I got to say, you know, the, and that's the subtitle, not what you think. It's about the difference between men and women and how they network. And I and we talk about this there. I think the biggest mistake that business people make is what I call premature solicitation, which you don't want to say fast three times. It'll get you in trouble. No, no. Uh, yeah. So it, I think that's the mistake. And let me put it in context. One of the things that I teach is the concept of VCP, the VCP process. It stands for visibility, credibility, profitability. It is the cornerstone of everything I teach. If business people don't get this right, nothing else they do will matter. It's a chronological process. It begins first with establishing visibility. Visibility is where people know who you are and what they do. Uh, credibility is the next phase, and that's where people know who you are, they know what you do, and they know you're good at it. And then finally is profitability, where people know who you are, they know what you do, they know you're good at it, and they're willing to pass you referrals on an ongoing reciprocal basis. Where networking all goes completely wrong is when people are trying to get referrals before there's a relationship. We've all experienced it. Somebody walks up to you and says, hi, Leanne, my name's Ivan. We should be doing business. Or here's, here's four or five copies of my card. Maybe you'll pass them to your clients and refer me. And I'm like, when that happens to me, I'm like, I'm sorry, what was your name again? You know, <laughs> I don't even know you. And you're wanting me to pass you referrals. And so asking for business before there's a relationship was a problem 28 years ago, and it's still a problem today. Thank you. It actually brought up a thought then. I was thinking about the word credibility. I, I often find that a lot of business owners um, don't understand what credibility is, and I think you just cleared that up for me personally. It's, you know, they say you need to be credible, but credibility can be just a word of mouth marketing in your local area, can't it? It doesn't need, it doesn't mean that you need to be on, you know, the Today Tonight show or the news yeah. or whatever. It's just about that uh, connection within your own community, and then through, obviously, maybe social media, etc., you can then build a bigger global mindset or network if you so wish. Yeah, you, you certainly don't have to have uh, credibility by being on a major television show. It certainly doesn't hurt, but um, you don't need that. One of the best ways to create credibility is for you to do such a good job with your clients and customers or patients that, uh, that they're out there talking positively about you or that they're producing uh, endorsement letters or testimonials that you can then show to your uh, prospective clients patients, customers. And, if, and and that kind of credibility is very important as well. Uh, there are other ways to establish credibility. Certainly social media where you're educating people, that's the key. Don't be constantly selling. It's one of the mistakes that people make on social media is that every time they communicate, they're selling, selling, selling. Instead, educate, educate, educate. Then when you have something to sell and you, you put that in, then people pay attention because they're, they're so interested in what you're teaching them. So you got to provide good content uh, in, in, in social media. Uh, and I think that's, that's the key in establishing credibility is, is helping people achieve their goals. And you can do that by, by educating, teaching them, providing them interesting information. Mm, thank you. I couldn't agree more. <clears throat> that's so true today. And I think business owners actually need to understand that we are in an ed education um, you know, place, whereas many years ago we concentrated on marketing and today uh, we're, oh, I feel the consumer is over being marketed to. There's too much out there. Mm. Yeah, everybody's trying to sell something. Not everybody's uh, educating or teaching people and I think those that are have an advantage. Absolutely, so true. Well done. So if... Um, if I was to ask you what, I think we actually just answered that one, what does a business owner need to, to know about being you know, successful in networking and it comes down to trust, yeah. credibility um, and, and vis being visual or visual in the, in the um, networking space, whether that's online or offline. So we've probably covered that one. Thank you, Ivan. Well, I've, I've got a couple of other uh, points that I wouldn't mind making there. Please do. Um, and, and oftentimes, when the, you, you didn't quite pose the question this way, but oftentimes people will say, what's the one secret? to making uh, successful networking or making networking uh, be successful. And, and so the one secret to success in networking is that there is not one secret. Oh. There, well, there isn't, but, but um, there are, an, it's like a formula. It's like a recipe for a great meal. Now, I can't cook. 
I, I'm missing the cook, <laughs> cooking gene. Uh, I burn water, but my wife is an amazing chef, and and it takes a recipe to be able to put together a great meal. So there are a number of things. Let me hit three for you. One is consistency. Uh, you got to be consistent. You got to be out there networking uh, on a consistent basis. You got to be um, teaching yourself and improving your game consistently. Second is you got to devote the time necessary to build a, a powerful word of mouth uh, program. In the gender book that I mentioned earlier, we surveyed 12,000 business people in every populated continent in the world, including uh, and especially Australia. They were very active in the survey. And we found that the average business person spends at least six and a half hours a, a week networking. That's average. So those of you watching this video, if you want to be average, you should spend at least six and a half hours. That's not what I recommend, I think you need to spend more, but that's sort of the baseline. If you're not spending at least that much, you're, you're not devoting enough time to it. The third is accountability. Accountability. Uh, you really want to hold yourself accountable to do the things that you're promising, and you want to network with people who will hold themselves accountable for uh, supporting each other. Let me, let me just go back to the first one, consistency, because I think this is important. It's really important to remember, I recommend that you do um, six things a thousand times, not a thousand things six times. And entrepreneurs have a tendency to flit from one thing to another without being consistent and doing that same thing over and over again. So true. I mean, most entrepreneurs have this creative um, pies in the sky that they're always grasping after. Wow. So so what I got out of that was to do six things a thousand times, whatever they may be, <laughs> including networking. Yeah. Well, yeah. What you do is you, you find out from other people what's worked for them. And if that resonates with you, I mean, don't just make stuff up and do it. And don't go following the the latest bright, shiny object. Um, work with people who have experience and who are more successful than you. That's one of the things I did. I worked with people more successful than me. Then, then do those things a thousand times and just do a handful of them over and over and over again. Wonderful. What a wonderful um, piece of information. I think every entrepreneur out there would be sitting there going, really, do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you don't have to if you don't want to be successful. No, that's true. But, you know, we all want to be successful. So thank you for that. That's really cool. I'm sort of sitting here going, oh, no. <laughs> um, well, excuse. let me ask you a question. You do, the, you do these interviews. Would doing uh, one interview be enough to create a reputation as a good interviewer or as somebody that has, uh, you know, a lot of great content? Doing one wouldn't do you any good, would it? No, not at all. No. <laughs> so you do you do multiple ones over time. And it's doing that same thing over and over again that yields you name recognition, brand recognition. I mean, it seems so obvious when you think about it, but people don't think about it and they jump around from one concept to another. Oh, absolutely. It's like the gym membership, you know, we all sign up for a gym and then we don't go cuz it's too hard. <laughs> yep. Yep, Same yep. philosophy, yes, thank you. Okay, so you actually answered one of my other questions, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so the benefit, do you, what is the benefit do you see for BNI, uh, sorry, for members uh, and business owners in A, joining a networking uh, community like BNI, and, and I think I've already got the answer of that one, but also being on social media. So uh, for me, I see it being um, that consistency, being able to, you know, commit and turn up to a meeting every week and having that visual visual um, place. Um, is there anything else you could add on that? Yeah, I listen, you know, being active in groups like BNI, it's, it's all about generating referrals. You mentioned in my introduction that the organization passed 7.1 million referrals. We generated for the members $3.3 .3 billion worth of business for our members. Now, just so you know, $3.3 .3 billion is the same as the gross domestic product for the country of Liechtenstein. Wow. Okay, it's a small country, I know, but <laughs> still, but still how, how cool is that, that we as a business organization could act, actually generate as much business for our members as a small nation in the world? Okay, so I'm looking for a bigger nation next year, but I still think it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Now, social media. 
uh, to me, social media, it's not an um, either or scenario. It's either face to face or social media. To me, it's both and that you face to face has its place and will continue to have its place for decades to come. Uh, but social media, online networking uh, also has its place. I'm a fan. I'm active on LinkedIn. Uh, your your viewers can uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm active on Sun Tzu, which used to be Academy. I'm active on Ching. I think um, social networking is a great way, but the VCP process still applies. Mm -hmm. You can be guilty of, of premature solicitation online, but there it's at light speed. <laughs> you can spam people with it. So the same <laughs> rules kind of apply, but um, but I, I'm a believer in both. Mm, I, I couldn't agree more. Thank you for that. So as, um, as, as the world's leading networker, where do you see, or if, well, actually, I don't think there will be a lot of changes, but where do you see networking going in the future, like in the next five years? Right. Um, I think that we're going to see, uh, in terms of online, we're going to see more and more mobile apps uh, come into play. Uh, mobile apps, uh, I, I just read an article that said that LinkedIn, that 27% 20 of all unique visits on LinkedIn are presently happening on mobile apps. Mm. That's a huge percentage. Absolutely. So I, I think that we'll see more of that. I think we're going to see more of a combination of face-to-face -face networking and technology. For example, in BNI, we've created a system called BNI Connect. Now, our Australian uh, regions are not on it yet, but we hope to have them on it next year. Uh, and what BNI Connect does is it, it links uh, BNI membership with an online ability that will enable all members worldwide to connect globally. We presently have 80% of our organization on it. So 80% of our members worldwide not only go to a meeting every week, but they can connect with members anywhere in the world. So I see that kind of blending of technology and face-to-face -face for the future. That's fantastic. So when, when do you see Australia coming online? <laughs> 20, 2014. Hey, look, we're ready for Australia right now. <laughs> but, uh, we, you know, we'd bring you on immediately. The challenge is that uh, you would lose your existing data you know, your history. If we brought you on right now, we're not prepared to, to transfer over your history. It's much more complex than people know. I mean, I had one person say to me, oh, come on, I could do this in a few hours programming. And I sent them the BRS, which is the business requirements specifications. Uh, the original version was about 400 pages long. We've since added to it. He got the BRS and he said, Oh, yeah, no, I can't do this. This, <laughs> this is way too complicated. So, you know, really, we're happy to bring Australia on immediately. But the, the question is, uh, are you guys ready? And at this point, the answer has been no. But 2014 uh, is our plan to, to bring in Australia and to be and I connect. Fabulous. Sounds wonderful to be able to connect with everybody globally. It's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so just moving on, as New York's uh, Times best-selling author, you've written 17 books, Ivan. Congratulations. Yeah. And Thanks. can you share a little bit about your latest book that um, is called A Room Full of Referrals? Yeah, um, it's about behavior profiles and different styles and, and how they interact with each other. It's really based on uh, DISC systems, drive, influence, steadiness, and compliance, but we use it um, with a referral spin. That is, if you want to uh, get referrals from those behavioral styles, here are things that you need to do to understand how to work with them. If you want to give referrals to those behavioral styles, here are things that you need to understand in order to work with them. And so both getting and giving referrals. And what we do is we walk through and we have a little test to figure out what kind of style are you. Are you a go-getter or a promoter or a nurturer or an examiner? And, and then how do you work with those people? And it's really a, definitely a how-to book that, that, tell, that teaches you how to work with different behavioral styles. It's a great book. I have two amazing co-authors. One is Tony Alessandra. Tony is one of the world's leading experts on behavior profiles. And the second is uh, um, uh, Don Lyons. And Don is the number one expert in the world on behavior profiles as they relate to referral marketing. Number one. And so those two people are my co-authors. It's a great book. I, I recommend it. 
It's available on Kindle um, worldwide and uh, is available at BNI.com. Uh, it will be available on Amazon soon as an uh, actual book, but it is available at BNI.com right now. And also Kindle, we could download it from there. Correct. Oh, wonderful. I look forward to reading that one. Thank you so much. So if... Um if I was to ask you a personal question, if I may, <laughs> what is the best part of what you do today? Why do you do what you do? You know, I, I came to the conclusion years ago that um, as an individual, um, I may not be able to make a world of difference, but I can make a difference in the world. And that's really uh, why I do what I do. I'm, I believe, and it's the reason I said yes to those people who wanted me to open up a group for them, was that um, I, I, in a small way, can make a big difference uh, for individuals by helping to teach them how to network effectively. Because we don't teach this in colleges and universities anywhere in the world. Mm. It's just not taught. And so by, <clears throat> by showing them how, and then providing them the mechanism to carry those ideas out. Um, I've had people who have said to me, I'm in, I'm in business today through this recession because of BNI. The amount of business I've generated has kept me in business, and, and that's why I do what I do. Wonderful. Thank you, and I'm glad that you do what you do. <laughs> Thanks. Me so, too. Yeah. So, Ivan, I really appreciate your time today, and... Um, I did have one other question that maybe many of the, the viewers d don't realize, but a little bird told me that in your spare <laughs> time, you like to do magic tricks. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm actually um, a member of the Academy of Magical Arts, uh, which is known as the Magic Castle in Los Angeles. If you ever come to L.A., I'd be glad to get you a pass Thank you. Uh, to go there. Uh, I am, I am. But the key is that I'm an amateur <laughs> magician. Uh, I'm not a professional, and um, and y y you know people that you'll see at places like the Magic Castle are truly professionals. Oh, wonderful. So, have you got any tricks up your sleeve for us today? <laughs> uh, well, I I'd have to say that there's no magic to referral marketing. Uh, that the secret to success without hard work is still a secret. Y you've you've got to do all of the things that I talk about in order to be successful. Um, and I think uh, when people understand that, then it's a matter of applying those things to, to achieve it. So true. Thank you. So, Ivan, before I let you go this afternoon, um, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you would like to share with the listeners today? Sure. I think that one of the most important things that I have learned in the last 28 years of running BNI is that it's, you know that expression, it's not what you know, it's who you know? I, I, I don't think it's what you know or who you know. I think it's how well you know each other. It really counts. It's all about going deep and building relationships with people. Networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. It's about cultivating relationships with other business professionals. And, and I think that's uh, a key aspect of what uh, has people be successful in our program. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time this morning and you're a wealth of knowledge for business owners out in the world and I hope that A, they join a BNI chapter near them and that they read your book and that they can generate referrals um, to keep their business growing. So thank you so much for your time. I really, really am truly grateful. Thank you. Great interview. Thanks.